Welcome to another unit in this course on economics. This time I'm going to talk about the effects of monetary policy in the context of the Mandel Fleming model. Well, monetary policy, that's relatively easy. This simply means an increase or decrease of the money supply by the central bank. It's expensive monetary policy if the money supply is increased. It's restrictive monetary policy if the money supply is decreased. So let's have a look what happens. And well, in this context, I'm going to take two approaches. That's due to the fact that the Manuel Fleming model includes a foreign exchange market. So we need to account for the exchange rate regime underlying all of this. So here in the first slide, I'm going to talk about under the assumption that we have a fix, uh, flexible exchange rate regime. And on the next slide, I'm going to talk about the situation, about what happens in a model under the assumption that we have a fixed exchange rate regime. So let's start with the flexible exchange rate regime and the basic Mandel Fleming model with the IS, LM and ZZ curve all intersecting in one point. And then, well, the first step is actually the monetary policy. Here, we're only considering expensive policy because restrictive policy would be the exact same thing, only from an opposite perspective. So if you want to know what happens in a context of restrictive policy, just turn my arguments around. So, well, we have expensive monetary policy. The money, money supply increases. And this will move our LM curve to the right. So we get a new LM curve to the right of the original one. So we also get a new domestic equilibrium. Here the intersection of IS and LM curve, that's our domestic equilibrium. And this lies below the ZZ curve. So in other words, since the ZZ curve determines the global interest rate and this intersection determines the local or the domestic interest rate, our domestic interest rate is actually lower than the global one. And, well, we get a first positive effect with regards to GDP. So our interest rates decrease, so it becomes less beneficial to invest domestically. So a lot of investments will be withdrawn from the, our country. A lot of investors will go abroad where the interest rate is higher. So we have a lot of capital outflows. We have a lot of capital outflows. So a lot of euros, considering euros being the domestic currency, a lot of euros will be offered on the foreign exchange market. If a lot of euros are offered, the price for euros will drop. So euros will depreciate. Well, if euros depreciate, the first question is, can they depreciate? Well, as I said in this first slide, we assume a flexible exchange rate regime. So yes, here the euro can depreciate. So the value of the euro will drop, meaning our goods from a foreign perspective become cheaper. On the other hand, from our perspective, foreign goods will become more expensive. So in consequence, foreigners will buy more domestic goods and we will buy less foreign goods. So our exports will increase, our imports will decrease. And if we sum this up, this means our net exports will actually decrease. However, if we have decreasing, uh, sorry, will increase. If we have increasing net exports, this means we have more consumption going on. We have more demand for domestic goods. More demand for domestic goods means our IS curve will shift and it will shift to the right. IS curve, goods market, if there is a higher demand for goods and services, IS curve will move to the right. 
And that's actually what happens here. So due to the fact that our currency, our goods becomes cheaper, become cheaper, there will be more consumption of these goods. This will move the IS curve to the right and it will move the IS curve to the right and the equilibrium to the right until they again intersect the ZZ curve and there is no longer any discrepancy in interest rates between global and domestic interest rate. So we will get a new final equilibrium which is here at this point R1 Y3. So in consequence we will have the same exchange rate as before, but we will have a higher GDP. So in a context of flexible exchange rates, monetary policy will actually have a beneficial effect on economic growth. Well, that was the perspective for flexible exchange rates. So let's do the same model again. But now the conclusion, what happens if we have fixed exchange rates? Well, the beginning is the same. We get a rightwards movement of the LM curve due to the increase in the money supply, new LM curve, new equilibrium, which actually lies below the ZZ curve, meaning lower interest rates domestically. We will get capital exports, euro would depreciate due to the fact that we have fixed exchange rate the euro cannot depreciate so the central bank will actually step in and will do something so that the euro cannot depreciate well at this point there is an oversupply of euros so what does the central bank do it will buy the oversupply of euros keeping the value of the euro stable however if the central bank buys euros, this means it will decrease the supply of euros. So it will decrease the money supply. And what does this mean? Well, this means that our LM curve will actually move back to our original position. It has to move back to exactly this original situation because elsewise we would still have a disadvantage regarding the exchange uh, the interest rates and would still have a depreciation. So it needs to go back to the exact same situation, meaning this would fully cancel out the positive effect we had originally. So in this case, we have positive monetary policy, expensive po monetary policy, which then is canceled out by, uh, by restrictive monetary policy of the same volume. This also means that the positive effect we get from the first part, from the first expansion of the money supply, will diminish again. So we are actually at the original point where we started from in the beginning. So summarizing, this means monetary policy with fixed exchange rates will have no effect whatsoever on our equilibrium situation. So in other words, monetary policy in the Mandel-Fleming model will only have a positive effect, will only have any effect at all if we have flexible exchange rates. Or in a more general fashion, the more flexible the exchange rate regime is, the more effective will monetary policy be in the context of the Mandel-Fleming model. Well, that's then everything there is on this session on monetary policy in the Mandel Fleming model. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I'll say goodbye and see you next time.